Hello everyone, welcome back. When was the last time you used Lucky Raspberry as part of a build? For me, it was almost two years ago, and while buffs it received made it more appealing to use in lower tier content, in endgame content it slightly misses the mark because of its RNG randomness. However, such an exotic won't put me down with not giving it a try in today's environment, as today we'll be covering a build that makes full use of the exotic with greater benefits applied. With the build, you can jolt multiple enemies at once, get a random amount of grenade energy back which pairs well with grenade mods we have, good multi-area coverage with taking out multiple enemies at once, and an easy to understand setup that anyone of any level can use. Here is how I went about it. Starting with aspects, you're going to want to have flow state where defeating jolted targets makes you amplified. Then you want Tempest Strike where sliding and activating your melee unleashes a arc uppercut attack towards enemies. The following aspects will help greatly with making us amplify quickly and utilising our melee for the long range effect it has. However, just be aware that the fragments are the key to making the build fully workable here. For fragments, we have Spark of Recharge where while quickly wounded, your melee and grenade energy regenerate by 400%. A spark of Discharge where Arc Weapon Final Blows have a chance to create Iron Traces, a spark of Shock where your Arc Grenades jolt targets, and a spark of Ions where defeating jolt targets grants Iron Traces. Having the following fragments will greatly enhance our chest exotic to a much higher degree compared to what the exotic currently offers, and this is important because of the end game content we're playing, and the random must to the exotic as well. Being able to get Feral Grenade Energy back will help with the random grenade energy we'll get when using Lucky Raspberry against multiple enemies, which depending on how things go, means you can easily get a full grenade back if timed right. And then using Spark of Fragment to generate more Iron Traces via our weapon of choice should allow our grenade to top up their self no matter how much is given back to us. This may seem a bit much for the exotic in name, but as we are entering Grandmaster level territories, we need to make sure our grenades are freely available to use and operate with, just to be safe. Within the mods and stats section, having both resilience and discipline at a high level will be important for supporting the build. Having a bit of focus in the strength as well will benefit the user, as it will be used here and there, but it's not a huge requirement. Resilience at tier 10 will grant us a 30% damage reduction for the build, with a bit of trade off for my recovery as shown. The following level is required for surviving lethal hits in endgame, and can be life and death if not fully prepped for certain encounters. At this level, we will be high enough to survive most one-shot hits in master to GM level content, with the only downside being slow recovery speed, so if you do have the space to do so, expand your recovery rate to at least a tier 5 for safekeeping. A discipline will be at tier 10 for a 53 second cooldown. As your grenades will be the arc bolt grenades, they don't offer a lot to the user in terms of damage and duration. However, they excel well when tagging multiple enemies at once and also producing jolt plus ion traces when needed quickly. With the added on benefits of Lucky Raspberry, we will need to add on additional mods to help balance out its RNG grenade regen effect. Having grenade kickstart for a 38.4% grenade regen, impact induction for a 12% grenade regen, orbs of restoration for a 10% ability regen, bomber for a 12% grenade regen, and distribution for 4% will be the ideal option to pick. This should be more than enough to balance out the given exotic and its overall effectiveness for the user. The next section will be focusing on armor charges and additional mods that are recommended for the build. Charged up times 2 will give you a plus 1 to how many charged stacks you have, while stacks and stacks will increase orbs collection to plus 2. After that, having a harmonic siphon and powerful attraction mod will allow us to create and collect orbs of power within our venicity. Lastly, having the ammo finder, reserves and scavenger mod for increasing the payload of our heavy weapons is also recommended. So for weapons, we are using the Trinity Ghoul to match up with Lucky Raspberry multi jolt effect. The weapon is perfect contender for dealing with all sorts of enemies in Destiny 2 environments, and no matter the build or loadout used, it will operate really well no matter what. Now, using the weapon with Lucky Raspberry is recommended for the multi jolt effect the two both share, which can be very beneficial for the user when leading up attacks, or just need to clear out a room quickly. Since the two can tag multiple enemies at once while also charging Trinity Cool, this allows dealing with wide scale enemy deployments to be heavily dealt with with ease of mind. 
Also, since we do have Spark of Ions and Discharge in hand for the bow, creating Ion Traces that benefits Lucky will help fix the underlying issue that the Lucky Raspberry has when being used in endgame. Heavy, we have the Hot-Headed Depth with Tracker and Explosive Light. This area does not need any must-have perks or even stacked weapons for the build, since Heavy will be used sparingly. The following is great for taking down many bosses, the bosses overall, although any Arc Rocket is fine to use here. I found that the Crux Termination Rocket Launcher is a great alternative to have if you want to use the build as close as possible without using the same gear shown. Just a heads up though, again the weapon requires farming certain lost sectors or even just getting lucky in the world drops, so do be a bit prepared here. The particular usage of Lucky Raspberry hasn't been as uplifting with as many people as I would have thought though, even with the updated exotic effect. When compared to other grenade based art exotics such as Shinobi's Vow or Moth Keepers, uh, Raspberry feels like it's missing a few marks off to truly elevate its usage in both PvE and PvP content. Why this may be the case could be due to the grenade type and how generally weak it is once it does hit the more harder enemies overall. But at the same time, using it in Grand Masters as an example won't allow you to fully get the right experiments of chaining grenades back to back compared to the lower end content. I have made a few adjustments on the build to accommodate the downside of the exotic when being used in the end game. Its increased arc chain effect will allow us to net and kill more enemies with one grenade in mind, and triggering the jolt effect will give you a random amount of grenade energy back upon success. Since the amount triggered is very random and quite unpredictable, Focusing on grenade based mods, fragments and aspects will help level out the grenade regen vulnerability in terms of regenerating what is lost. Lastly, applying focus on ionic traces with a weapon that can trigger them fast and easily such as Trinity Ghoul will overall allow you to use your grenades more often no matter how much is returned to you. This overall will allow your lucky raspberry to carry on acting how it should be but also having support from Trinity Ghoul, Spark of Discharge, Spark of Recharge, and Spark of Ions on the hand. Even though the randomness and weak nature of the grenade is still present in the build, its success in PvE is noticeable when dealing with huge groups of enemies all at once. Chucking a grenade in a group of spawned enemies will net a huge amount of energy return to you, but also charging your exotic weapon as well. This means not only do you become amplified in a short time frame with benefits, but you can keep on being amplified via Trinity Cause Effect non stop. Its overall effectiveness in endgame is there and good to use as long as you keep aware of the weakness of the grenade and exotic in mind. We know there are better options available, but trying an exotic that has been heavily stepped on for years it shouldn't be forgotten to this degree. So, I hope you all enjoyed today's build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below. Well, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and I also recommend you view my playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. So, it was great sharing today's video with you all, and I generally hope to see you again soon.